Hello from Halifax. This is Joe with JoeToTheWorld.com and today we're going to make my paw print pillow cover. Everything you'll need is in this video, but if you prefer to follow along written instructions, there's a link to the free pattern which is on my website in this video's description. There's also a link where you can purchase the print ready PDF of this pattern. The paw print pillow cover is an easy pattern, but if you're brand new to color work, I highly recommend watching my video tutorial on how to crochet with two colors or reading the step-by-step -step guide that's on my website. I'll include links in the description below. The pattern creates a pillow cover that fits an 18 inch by 18 inch pillow insert. The actual pillow cover is slightly smaller, but it stretches to fit. To ensure a proper fit, I highly recommend making a gauge swatch where four inches is 11 single crochet stitches and four inches is 13 rows. What you'll need to complete this pattern is bulky weight size five yarn. I'm using Red Heart Soft Essentials. For the main color, you're gonna want approximately 400 yards. And for the contrast color, you'll want 120 yards. I'm using a K hook and you'd want to either use a K hook or whatever size hook you need to obtain the gauge. You'll want a measuring tape, scissors, yarn needles, pins, and an 18 by 18 inch pillow insert. Just wanted to share a quick tip before we get started is I always wrap my yarn in paper towel rolls, especially when doing color work, and it prevents the yarn from getting tangled. I hope you enjoy creating this pattern. I would love to see what you make, and I'd be so grateful if you could give me a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's get started. So with your main color and your K hook, we're going to do a slip knot and then chain 46. So to make a slip knot, we make a loop, pull the yarn through to make another loop, and then place it onto our hook and pull tight. Now we're going to chain 46. So you can put me on pause and hit play again when you've chained 46. With our 46 chains completed, let's begin row one. In the second chain from hook, we are going to single crochet. So that's the first chain, and here's the second, and we're gonna single crochet into it. And then we're going to single crochet into each chain across. So you can put me on pause and hit play again when you've single crocheted into each chain all the way across and you'll have a total of 45 single crochet stitches. So let's complete row one and we always complete a row by chaining one and turning our work. That chain stitch that we just made is never going to count as a stitch. So each row in this pattern has 45 stitches but that chain stitch that we just did does not count. So for row two, we are going to single crochet into each stitch across, starting with the very first stitch that's attached to the chain. Single crochet into that, and in each stitch across. You can hit pause, and then hit play again when you've completed single crocheting into each stitch across. Now that we've single crocheted all across row two, before continuing, I'm just gonna do a quick measurement. And before I measure, I always like to give my piece of work just a little tug to loosen up the stitches a little bit because it is a pillow cover and it's going to be stretching to fit. So making sure that we're accurately measuring by stretching it out just a little bit. Taking my measuring tape and let's see here. Oh, perfect. It's measuring 17.5, which is exactly the measurement that it's intended to be. If your work is much smaller or larger than that, I definitely recommend starting again with a larger or smaller hook size. 
and, and and make sure that you do stretch it out a little bit before measuring because when I first measured this it was very very tight and it equaled 16 inches but then once it's loosened up a bit it was 17 and a half which is perfect now let's complete row two by chaining one and turning our work chain one turn our work now we're going to be doing rows three all the way to eight, and we're gonna be doing the exact same thing in the next six rows. We are going to be single crocheting into that very first stitch and single crocheting all the way across. When you get to the end, chain one and turn your work, and you're gonna be doing that for rows three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So hip pause, complete rows three to eight and after you've completed row eight hit play again and we'll continue. So we now have eight rows of single crochet stitches completed. Before continuing let's do a quick measurement. As always I like to stretch out my work, lay it flat, measure from end to end. Perfect we're at 17.5 inches. Now we're going to complete row eight. You may have already done this. So I'm just gonna complete row eight by chaining one and turning my work. And now the fun's really gonna begin as we start row nine. And I wanna make sure that you are on working on a right side row. And we can tell it's a right side row because the starting piece of yarn is on the left side. Row nine is where it really gets fun, is this is where we add our contrast color. We are going to be single crocheting with our main color for 20 stitches, and on the 21st stitch, we're gonna add our contrast color. I would highly recommend that if you've never added a color before to watch my video on how to crochet with two colors. I'll, there's a link in the description as I go through these steps in a lot more detail than what I'll cover today. So let's get started single crocheting with our main color for 20 stitches and always starting in that first chain or first stitch sorry so single crochet for 20 stitches hit pause and then hit play again when you've completed those 20 and we'll add the color together so we've just made 20 single crochet stitches and in the next stitch the 21st stitch is where we're going to add our contrast color so it's still with our main color, insert our hook into the next stitch, put our yarn over our hook and pull it through so that we have two loops on our hook. Now we're gonna drop the main color and let it hang along the back, which is the wrong side, so it's just hanging there. We're gonna pick up our contrast color and I'm gonna have the end of the contrast color hanging in the back of the work. And I'm gonna just put it over our hook like that. So once again, taking my contrast color and just putting it on our hook, making sure that the end is hanging in the back. Now with the contrast color on our hook, I'm gonna pull it through these two loops. I'm going to now pull all everything, pull absolutely everything I can to make it nice and tight. There we go. So that's now a nice tight stitch just from pulling all the ends. And now we've made 21 stitches with our main color and we're gonna start working with our contrast color. We are going to single crochet in the next four stitches with our new color. One, two, three, four. On the next stitch, we are going to switch back to the old color. To the main color. We're going to insert our hook into the next stitch, pull through our current color, 
and then find the main color, the gray, that's just hanging in the back here. It's just hanging right where we left it. And I'm gonna pick it up and pull it through my two loops. Pull everything tight again. And now we've just completed five stitches with our contrast color. And we are now using our main color again, and we're gonna use that for the remainder of the row. Just single crochet with our main color all the way across. So you can put me on pause, hit play again when you've completed the row. So we should have 21 stitches completed with the main color, five stitches completed with the contrast color, and 19 stitches completed with the main color. To complete the row, we are going to chain one and turn our work. And now we can begin row 10. To begin row 10, we're gonna single crochet in the first 17 stitches across with our main color. So there, into the first stitch. You go ahead and put me on pause and play again when you've single crocheted for 17 stitches. So we've just finished 17 stitches and on our next stitch, we are going to change colors. So still with our main color, we're gonna insert our hook into the next stitch, pull it through. We now have two loops on our hook. We're gonna pull it towards us so that it's hanging along the wrong side, which is what's currently facing us. We're gonna pick up our contrast color and we're gonna put it on our hook and pull it through. Pull everything nice and tight. And now we've completed our stitches with the main color. We can begin working with our contrast color. But before we do that, I wanna explain that right now, the rest of, for the contrast color, we need to single crochet for eight times in total with this new color. And what if we did that and picked up our main color again at the end of those eight stitches, it would create a really long floating strand of yarn that would be hanging along the back of our work. So to prevent this floating piece of yarn from beginning too long and prevent pulls and snags, we're gonna catch it and we're gonna incorporate it into the back of our stitch so that our work is really clean and tidy. And I'll demonstrate to show you that this is what the paw print is gonna look like when we're finished. This is the wrong side. And you can see that it's all neat and tidy. There's not big strands of yarn that's dangling. It's all tucked away nicely so that when we insert our pillow, it's not going to get caught on anything and, and ruin our project. So we're going to start catching floats in the next few stitches. There's not an exact number of stitches you absolutely need to catch your float on. I rec recommend every four to six stitches we'll catch our floats. So let's do four stitches with our, our contrast color and then we'll catch our first float. So in the first stitch, which is actually gonna be into the main color, we're gonna single crochet. And we're gonna single crochet for four stitches. One, two, three, four. So now we're gonna catch our first float. So we take the piece of yarn that we want to catch and we simply put it in between the next stitch and our hook. So right now it's just going to be in between the stitch and our hook. Now we insert a hook into the next stitch and we bring that piece of yarn towards us so that it's in between the loop that's on our hook and the stitch. Now we're going to pretend like it isn't even here. We're going to single crochet as we normally do pull the yarn through. We have two loops on our hook. 
you'll notice that this is um, the the main color that we're catching is actually not on our hook. It's just already been trapped. And now when we finish our stitch, it's completely trapped in the back of that stitch and it won't show through the front. Now we're gonna single crochet normally for the next two stitches. One, two. And then the next stitch is where we're gonna change our colors back. So we're gonna insert our hook into the next stitch, pull our yarn through. We now have two loops on our hook, but instead of finishing the stitch with our current color, we bring it towards us so that it's hanging along the wrong side row. We pick up our new color, put it on our hook and pull it through. Pull everything nice and tight. And now we're working with our main color again. Single crochet into the next stitch and in each stitch across. And you can hit pause and then hit play again when you've completed the row. At the end of row 10, you should have 18 single crochet stitches with the main color, eight with the contrast color, and 19 with the main color again. To complete the row, we're going to chain one and turn. And after each row, especially now that we're catching floats, and we're using two colors, it's really important to stretch your pillow cover wide after each row. So we've stretched it wide and now we're going to start row 11. And I want to point out too that when we caught our float here, you cannot see the stitch coming through the front. And it's important to always check to make sure that you cannot see the, the floats that you caught in the front of your work. But if you turn it over, you can see that it's nicely caught right in the back of those stitches. So for row 11, with our main color, we're going to single crochet in the next 17 stitches. You can go ahead, put me on pause, hit play again when you've completed 17 stitches. I don't know if you just heard Charlie in the background, but I think it's very appropriate while doing a paw print pillow cover to hear a dog barking in the background. And that's Charlie. Okay, put me on pause when you have 17 single crochet stitches completed. With our 17 stitches completed, we're gonna change colors in the next stitch. Insert our hook, pull our loops through. We have two loops on our hook. We're gonna go into the back and find our contrast color. So here it is, we pick it up, pull it through our two loops, pull everything tight. And that completes 18 stitches with the main color. Now we're gonna single crochet with our contrast color for five stitches. And that first stitch could be a little tricky, so always make sure that you're crocheting in the, the next stitch, not skipping over it by, by accident. So let's single crochet into that. One, two, three, four, five. And in the next stitch, we're gonna catch our float, insert our hook into the next stitch. We find the piece of yarn that we wanna catch, which is the main color that was hanging right where we left it. And we're gonna just place it on the back of our, on our hook behind the stitch, okay? And now we just leave it there, pretend like it's not even there, and single crochet as we normally would. Pull through our contrast color. We have two loops on our hook and finish the stitch and pull the, con the main color that we just caught nice and tight. And now it is trapped in the back of our work, which is perfect. Now we're gonna single crochet with our contrast color for two more stitches. One, two. And on the next stitch here, let's change colors back to the main color. Insert our hook into the stitch, pull it through. Now go find the main color, which is hanging right where we caught it, and pull it through our two loops. Pull everything tight. Now we're gonna use this main color in single crochet for the next 18 stitches all across the row. So put me on pause, 
Hit play again when you have 18 stitches completed. So there should be 18 stitches with the main color, nine stitches with the contrast color, and 18 again with the main color. And to finish row 11, we're going to chain one and turn our work. Stretch wide after each row. And now we are going to begin row 12. For row 12, we're going to be single crocheting in the next 17 stitches. So you go ahead, put me on pause and hit play again when you have 17 single crochet stitches completed with the main color. With 17 now complete, we're gonna change colors on the next stitch, insert our hook, bring our yarn towards us so it's hanging along the wrong side, pick back up the contrast color, pull it through our loops, pull everything tight, and we're gonna single crochet with our contrast color for four stitches. One, two, three, four. On the next stitch, we're gonna catch our float. So we're gonna pick up our main color here, put it between uh, or over our next stitch, insert a hook into the stitch, bring our yarn forward so it's in between our loop and our stitch, and single crochet as we normally would. Pull everything tight. Now single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three. Now we're gonna change colors back to the main color. So insert our hook into the next stitch, pull it through. We have two loops on our hook. Take the contrast color, bring the yarn towards you, pick up the other color, put it on our hook, pull through, pull everything tight. Wonderful. Now we're gonna use our main color again for the next 18 stitches. You go ahead, put me on pause. Hit play again when you've completed 18 stitches all the way across the row. At the end of row 12, you should have 18 stitches with the main color, nine stitches with the contrast color, and 18 stitches with the main color. Let's complete row 12 by, once again, chaining our work and turning, and stretching wide after each row. Row 13, with our main color, we are going to single crochet for 16 stitches. So hit pause and pick me back up when you have 16 stitches completed. With 16 stitches now completed, we're gonna change colors, insert our hook, next stitch, making sure the main color is hanging along the back, pick up our contrast color, pull it through our two loops, everything tight and with our contrast color we're going to single crochet in the next five stitches making sure I always find that first stitch to be a little tricky there's one two three four five on the next stitch here we're going to catch our float so we're going to insert our hook into the next stitch, find the main color that we want to catch, put it over our hook in the back of our stitch, and single crochet as we normally would, pulling it nice and tight. We can't see it. Perfect. Now we're going to single crochet still with this contrast color for four more stitches. One, two, three, four and on the next stitch here we're going to change colors insert a hook into the stitch bring forward two loops find the main color that we want to change to pull it through our loops everything tight now with our main color we're going to single crochet for 17 stitches put me on pause hit play again when you have 17 completed you should have 17 single crochet stitches with the main color, 11 with the contrast color, and 17 with the main color. Let's complete row 13 by chaining our work and turning. I keep saying chaining our work. Chain one and turn our work. 
Stretch wide after each row, and let's begin row 14. For row 14, we're gonna single crochet in the next 16 stitches. You go ahead, hit pause, hit play again when you've done 16 stitches. With 16 now completed, let's change colors, insert our hook, pull our yarn through, make sure that it's hanging now towards us. Pick up the contrast color, pull it through, pull everything tight. Now with our contrast color, we're going to single crochet in the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. The next stitch, we're going to catch our float, which means we pick up our contrast, our main color, put it in between uh, our active stitch and our next stitch. Insert our hook, pull it towards us so that it's caught. Single crochet as we normally would, pull it tight. Perfect. Now we're going to single crochet in the next five stitches. Two, five, and then the following stitch in the next stitch here, we're going to change our colors back. Insert our hook into the next stitch, pull our loops through. Bring our yarn forward, pick up the main color, pull it through our loops, and in the next stitch with our main color, single crochet. We're going to single crochet for a total of 16 stitches to complete the row. Put me on pause, hit play again when you've completed 16 stitches. You should have 17 stitches with your main color. 12 stitches with your contrast color and 16 with the main color. To complete row 14, we're going to chain one and turn our work. I said that correctly this time. And stretch wide. Row 15. We are going to single crochet for 13 stitches. And I'm going to go a little faster here. So every time you see instructions show up on your screen, pause the video and come back when you've completed those instructions. So we'll start here by coming back after you've completed 13 single crochet stitches with your main color. With 13 now complete, we're going to change colors, pull through our two loops, make sure our yarn's hanging in the back, pull up our contrast color, pull it through our two loops, pull tight, now with the contrast color, we are going to single crochet for five stitches. With five stitches now complete, we're gonna catch our float, insert our hook into the next stitch, take our main color, place it on the back of our stitch on our hook, pull through. It's now caught in the back and we're gonna single crochet for another five stitches with our contrast color. We now have 11 stitches completed with our contrast color, and we're gonna catch our float again by inserting a hook, putting our main color on the back of our stitch, pulling through, and now we're gonna crochet, single crochet with our contrast color for one more stitch. And on the following stitch, change colors. So pull through our two loops, put our new, color, our main color, pulling it through our two loops, pulling tight. And now with our main color, we're going to single crochet for 17 stitches to complete the row. So you should have 14 stitches with your main color, 14 stitches with your contrast color, and, four, and 17 stitches with your main color. To complete row 15, chain one and turn stretch wide. Row 16. We are going to single crochet with our main color for 16 stitches. Single crochet for 16 stitches. With 16 now completed, we are going to change colors. And with our contrast color, we are going to single crochet for five. With five stitches now completed, we're going to catch our float. And 
and single crochet with our contrast color for another five stitches. We have 11 stitches now completed with our contrast color. We're gonna catch our float once again. And single crochet for three stitches. One, two, three, and then change colors. Pulling through our main color, pull everything tight and single crochet for the next 12 stitches. We now have 17 stitches with our main color, 16 stitches with our contrast color, and 12 stitches with our main color. Let's complete row 16, chain one, and turn. Oh, we're making progress here, stretching our piece wide and let's begin row 17. Row 17. With our main color we're in a single crochet for eight stitches. With eight stitches now complete let's change colors. tight and now with our contrast color we're going to single crochet for five stitches. In the next stitch we're going to catch our float, insert our hook, place the main color on the back of our hook and pull through the contrast color. Should be nicely caught. Now single crochet for another five stitches. We now have 11 stitches made with the contrast color, and let's catch our float again. Insert our hook, have the main color on the back, pull through, single crochet for another four stitches. Let's catch our float again. And just single crochet for another one stitch. On the next stitch we're going to change colors, drop our current piece of yarn and pick up the next turn which is nice and close by. Pulling it through our two loops, pull tight. Now with our main color we're going to single crochet for 17 stitches. Let's do a quick count of how row 17 is looking. We should have nine stitches with our main color, 19 with our contrast color, and 17 with our main color. Let's complete row 17, chain one and turn. Stretch your work nice and wide, and let's begin row 18. For row 18, we are going to single crochet across the next 16 stitches. With our 16 stitches completed, we're gonna change colors in the next stitch. And my stitch, if you can see here, it, it's quite small, so I don't want you to miss that to make sure that you're working into the correct stitch. But as we go back and forth between these two colors, sometimes the, the first stitch can get a little tight. So make sure you're working into the correct stitch. And into that small, tight stitch we go. Bring our yarn forward, change colors. Now with our new color, we're going to single crochet for five stitches. With our five stitches now complete, let's catch our float. And single crochet for another five stitches. We have 11 stitches made so far. Let's catch our float again. And single crochet for another five stitches. We now have 17 completed with our contrast color. We're going to catch our float one more time. And single crochet into the next stitch. And the following stitch, change colors. Now 
And now with our main color, finish the row by single crocheting for a total of eight stitches. We should have 17 stitches with our main color, 20 stitches with our contrast color, and eight stitches with our main color. Let's complete row 18 with a chain one and turn and stretch wide. Row 19, we are going to single crochet for six stitches. With six stitches now complete, into the next stitch, we're gonna change colors. Pull tight. Now with our contrast color, single crochet for five stitches. After five stitches, catch our float. And single crochet again for another five stitches. Let's catch our float again. And single crochet for another five stitches. Let's catch our float one more time. Hold tight and single crochet one more time with our contrast color and on the next stitch let's change colors dropping the yarn in the back pulling up the main color pulling it through pull everything tight and now with our main color we are going to be single crocheting for four stitches one, two, three, four. And on the fifth stitch here, so this next stitch, we are going to be catching our contrast color. And we've never done this before, but why we're doing this is to set up for the following row to make sure that the contrast color is nearby when we need it. So with our main color, insert our hook into the next stitch, take your contrast color, put it behind the stitch onto your hook. Now finish the stitch with your main color and complete the stitch. Now the contrast color is caught and we can continue crocheting across the row. And the contrast color will be nearby when we need it in the following row. We should have seven single crochet stitches with the main color, 20 with the contrast color, and 18 with the main color. Let's complete row 19, chain one and turn, and stretch wide. You can see why it's important to be stretching wide because it is starting to get a little bit bunched up. Stretch it nice and wide, and you'll see that we've caught our contrast color here because we are going to be adding the first little, uh, what do they call the finger, paw fingers. <laughs> We're gonna add our first little paw finger uh, on the next row. Row 20, with our main color, single crochet for the next nine stitches. With nine stitches now complete, we're gonna change colors. And this is why we caught the contrast color in the previous row so that it's nice and close by and it's not creating too much of a, a long strand that's hanging there. So we're gonna add our contrast color here. And now working with our contrast color, single crochet for four stitches, making sure that you're not missing that first stitch. One, two, three, four. And on the next stitch, we're gonna change colors again. Oh, gonna insert our hook into the stitch, pull forward our two loops with our contrast color, and then change colors. There we go. 
pull everything tight. Now we're working with our main color for two single crochet stitches. One, two, and on the third stitch, on that next stitch, we're gonna change colors again. Insert our hook, bring our yarn forward, get the contrast color, put it onto our hook, pull through, pull everything tight. And now with our contrast color, we're gonna single crochet for five stitches. With five stitches now complete, let's catch our float. And single crochet for the next five stitches. Five stitches now complete. Let's catch our float again. And single crochet for five more times. On the next stitch, let's catch our float. And with our contrast color, single crochet two more times. On the next stitch, let's change colors. Bring our yarn towards us. Pull through our new color, pull everything tight. and single crochet with our main color now for six stitches. So our stitch count for row 20 should be 10 with our main color, five with our contrast color, three with our main color, 21 with our contrast color, and six with our main color. Let's complete row 20 by chaining one, and turning our work, and stretching wide. Row 21, we're going to single crochet in the next five stitches. With five stitches made, change colors. And with our contrast color, single crochet for five stitches. With five stitches made, let's catch our float. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> Put it on the back of our stitch. Pulling everything through, not everything, just the contrast color. And now again with the contrast color, single crochet for another five stitches. We now have 11 stitches completed. Let's catch our float again, bringing up the main color to the back and single crocheting for another five stitches. Let's catch our float one last time. Let's find it. Where did it go? There it is. Inserting our hook into the stitch. Next stitch, putting our main color on the back there. Pulling through. And now we're going to single crochet for two more times and then change colors. Okay. 
Now with our main color, we are going to single crochet for one stitch. And on the next stitch, change colors back. Now dropping the main color, picking up the contrast color, pulling it through, pull everything tight. Now with our contrast color, we're gonna crochet for four stitches. Two, three, four. And on the next stitch here, let's catch our float. and single crochet one more time with our contrast color. And then change colors on the next stitch. Now with our main color, single crochet for the rest of the row, making nine stitches. Our stitch count after row 21 should be six with our main color, 21 with our contrast color, two with our main color, seven with our contrast color, and nine with our main color. Complete the row by chaining one, turning, stretching, because this is where stretching really becomes important. I can see it pulling already so you want to keep it nice and stretched out all right let's begin row 22 we are going to single crochet with our main color for seven stitches with seven stitches now completed we are going to change colors And with our new color, our contrast color, single crochet for four stitches. On the next stitch, let's catch our float. And single crochet in the next two stitches. On the next stitch, let's change colors. And then with our main color now on our hook, single crochet one time. And in the next stitch, for me it's a tiny little stitch here, but it is a stitch, we are going to change colors into that tiny stitch. Now with our contrast color, single crochet five times. And catch our float. And single crochet for another five times. Catch our float again. Single crochet for another five times. And then catch our float one last time here. Now single crochet in the next two stitches. And in the next stitch, change colors. Now with our main color, single crochet across a row, creating uh, six 
single crochet stitches. Our stitch count after row 22 should be eight with our main color, eight with our contrast color, two with our main color, 21 with our contrast color, and six with our main color. Finish the row by chaining one, turning, and stretching wide. Row 23. With our main color, we're going to single crochet in the next five stitches. I really hope you're enjoying creating this pillow cover. If you're liking it, I'd be so grateful if you could hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So we've just made five stitches. And in the next stitch, we're gonna change colors. And with our contrast color, single crochet in the next five stitches. In the next stitch, let's catch our float. And then single crochet in the next five stitches. In the next stitch, catch our float. single crochet in the next five stitches. In the next stitch, let's catch our float one more time. And then we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches. On the final stitch here, let's change colors. Oh. <laughs> Two loops on our hook. Get our main color. You get so used to catching floats that it takes a second to realize that you're changing colors. All right, now we have our main color back on our hook and we are going to single crochet in the next two stitches. In the next stitch, let's change colors. And then with our contrast color, single crochet in the next four stitches. On the following stitch, let's catch our float. And single crochet in the next two stitches. On the last stitch here, on the next stitch, let's change colors. And with our main color, single crochet across the row, creating seven stitches. Our stitch count after row 23 should be six with our main color, 21 with our contrast color, three with our main color, eight with our contrast color, and seven with our main color. Let's complete row 23. Chain one and turn. Stretching nice and wide. So we're now going to start row 24. And at this point, what I thought would be most helpful, instead of you having to pause every time we change colors and catch floats, now that you know how to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on one page all the instructions for each row. 
and I'm going to do an example with you with those written instructions up so that you can see how to do it well following the written instructions that are on the video. I do want to point out that the written instructions on this video are exactly the same as they have been throughout the video so far. And they're a little different from the written pattern that's on my website or is available as a PDF because I specifically let you know when to change colors and when to catch floats versus in the written instructions on my website and in the PDF, it, it doesn't say exactly when to do that. So I'm going to continue in the pattern that we've been doing with this video where I explicitly tell you to change colors or to catch your float. And whenever I do that, please note that it counts as a stitch with that, that color that you've been working on. So here are the instructions that are on the page and we're going to go through all of them together so you know exactly what to do. And then from now on, I will just put those instructions for each row and I'll put them up for 10 seconds or so. You go ahead and pause, work on your row, and then pick me back up when you're ready to move on to the next row. So instruction says with MC S C six, which means with the main color, single crochet for six stitches. Two, three, four, five, six. Then it says to change colors, which just means that we insert a hook into our stitch pull through our main color, bring it towards us, add our contrast color by pulling, putting it onto our hook and pulling it through our two loops, pulling tight. And then it's set, and that counts as a stitch. That's what I was talking about. So that now, um, when we're doing our stitch count from right to left, and it says there's seven single crochet stitches with our main color, that's what I mean by that every time I say to change colors, it counts as a stitch. So you've now completed seven single crochet stitches with your main color. Now with our contrast color, it says with CC SC4, which means with our contrast color, we're gonna single crochet in the next four. Then it says catch float, which means we bring up our main color and catch that single crochet as we normally would. Again, that counts as a stitch. So now we've completed five single crochets with our contrast color, and that's important when we're doing our stitch count. Then we are going to follow the instructions with say with CC SC2, so that means with contrast color, single crochet two times. One, two, and then change colors. So insert our hook into our next stitch with our current color, bring the yarn towards us, attach the new color by putting on our hook and pulling through, pull everything tight. Now we're working with our main color again. The instructions say with MCSC3. So with our main color, we're gonna single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three, then it says change colors. So in the next stitch, we insert our hook into the next stitch, bring forward our current color, and then add the new color onto our hook, pull it through. So we've now completed four stitches with our main color. Now working with our contrast color, it says with CCSC5, and it says, so let's read this whole line. With, SC, with CC SC5, comma, catch float times three times. So what that means is with our contrast color, we're going to single crochet five times, catch our float, and then single crochet for five times, catch our float, single crochet for five times, catch our float. So let's do that now. 
So I'm single crocheting five times. Three, four, five. Now I'm going to catch my float on the next stitch, which is counting as a stitch. Single crochet. Now single crochet for five stitches. Three, four, five. The next stitch we're going to catch our float. This is uh, going to count as a as a stitch. And when I mean that, what I mean by catching, or it's going to count as a stitch, meaning that when I say to single crochet for five times and then catch our float, we're we're also single crocheting while we're catching our float. So it's not included in the five we've done before and the five we're gonna do after. It's counting as a new stitch. So in our total, it's important to know that that, that catching a float stitch is included in our stitch count. Hope that, hope that makes sense. So we're gonna catch our float. And Then single crochet for another five times. Three, four, five. And do the last catching of the float. So we've completed that, those instructions of single crocheting for five times, catching our float. We did that three times, so that is all good. Now it says with our contrast color to single crochet one time. And in the next stitch to uh, change colors. And it doesn't say next stitch, but whenever there's a, a comma that you know that it's in the next stitch, we do that. So in the next stitch, put our hook, bring through our current color and now pick up the main color, put it on our hook, pull through, and then the last instructions say main with main color single crochet six times. And then after each row, as you know, we always chain one and turn, but before you do that, you're gonna wanna do a stitch count and count the stitches from right to left so let's quickly do that together. So from right to left, that's how we're counting our stitches. With our main color, we should have seven. With our contrast color, we should have, sorry, with our contrast color, we should have eight. With our main color, we should have four. With our contrast color, we should have 20. And with our main color, we should have six. Now we chain one and turn, and then we begin row 25. And of course, stretch wide after each row. So I'm gonna put the instructions up for the rest of the rows, and I'll see you back when you've completed the paw print.
congratulations on completing the paw print. We are now on to row 42. And for the next seven rows, all we're going to do is single crochet in each stitch across. When we get to the end of a row, chain one, turn our work, and repeat. And we're going to do this for rows 42 all the way until we've completed row 48. So go ahead, single crochet across each stitch in the following seven rows. And after you've completed single crocheting in each row, weave in all your loose ends. What I recommend is weaving in the contrast color only to the contrast color parts and weave in all your loose ends with the main color into the main color parts. So complete rows 42 to 48, single crocheting across the entire row, chain one and turn, and then weave in all loose ends and come back and we'll assemble this pillow together. The front of your pillow cover is now complete. Congratulations. And I just want to say here that if you want to absolutely make my day, please, please, please send me a picture of what you create. Even my husband knows on the day that I get to see one of your products and your what you've created. It just makes me so happy. It would uh, I really would love to see what you've made. If you want to tag me in your posts or send me an email, I would absolutely love to see it. So if you're following with the written instructions, uh, this, the front of the pillow cover, is what we're calling piece A. And so if you're looking at the assembly diagram, um, just remember that the front of the work is called piece A. The bottom of the back of the pillow cover is called piece B. And I've gone ahead and made it, but I'm going to explain step by step is how you do it. So with your main color, start by chaining 46, just like we did with the front of the pillow cover. So chain 46. And then in the second chain from your hook, just like we did with the front of the pillow cover, single crochet and then single crochet in each stitch across. At the end of your row, chain one and turn, and that's all you do to complete piece B, is single crochet all the way across in each stitch and then chaining one and turning. And you're gonna do that for approximately 34 rows. And the, the, this piece B, the bottom of the back, should measure approximately 10 inches. When you get to the top on your final row, you know how we've always at the end of each row, we chain one and turn? Well, on the, your last row at the very top, we don't chain one and turn. We simply fasten off our yarn and weave in all our loose ends. So you go ahead, work on the bottom of the back, creating 46 chain stitches and then single crocheting into each row. So each row will have a total of 45 stitches chaining one and turning after each row. Do this for 44, th or excuse me, 34 rows until your piece measures approximately 10 inches. And then hit play again, and we'll make piece C, which is the top of the back. With your bottom of your back now completed, we're gonna work on the top of the back. That's what we're calling piece C. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did for the bottom of the back, which is we chain 46. And then in the second chain from hook, single crochet and single crochet all the way across into each stitch. Each row will have a total of 45 stitches. At the end of a row, chain one and turn your work. And you're gonna do this for approximately 30 rows. Your piece should measure after 30 rows, approximately nine inches. After you've completed 30 rows and your piece measures approximately nine inches, the last thing you'll do is on row 31, and it doesn't need to be exactly 31, it just once your piece measures approximately nine inches tall, you're gonna double crochet in each stitch across. And after you've double crocheted into each stitch across, you're going to fasten off and weave in your loose ends. As this is a new stitch, I do want to do a, a quick walkthrough with you just to make sure you're comfortable doing this. 
So let's just pretend, because I've already completed the back, but let's just pretend I've done 30 stitches for the top of the back, and now it's time to do our final row. What we're gonna do after we've completed our 30 stitches or our piece measures nine inches tall, we are going to chain two. And the reason we're chaining two is because we're gonna do double crochet stitches. So we we chain two, and then in that first stitch that's attached to these chains, we're gonna double crochet. So how we double crochet is we yarn over our hook and insert our hook into that very first stitch and pull through our yarn. We now have three loops on our hook. We're gonna yarn over our hook and pull through the yarn through two loops. So now we have two loops on our hook and we're gonna yarn over and pull through again. And we've just created our first double crochet stitch. Let's do one more. We're going to yarn over, place our hook into the next stitch, pull through. We have three loops on our hook. We're gonna pull the yarn through two of the loop, those loops, leaving two loops left on the hook and then yarn over, pulling through the yarn through the last two loops. Going a little faster here, yarn over, put our, our hook through the next stitch, pull through, pull the yarn through two loops, pull the yarn through two loops. Yarn over, insert hook into next stitch, pull through, pull our yarn through two loops, pull our yarn through two loops. And you're gonna do this all the way across. When you've completed the last stitch, simply fasten off and weave in all your loose ends and we will assemble the pillow together. So we are gonna take piece A, which is the paw print, and we are going to place it face down so that the wrong side is facing up and that the paw toes, I called them fingers before, <laughs> paw toes are at the top, okay? Then we're gonna take piece B, which is a piece without any single crochet stitches, and this is the bottom. And with the last row we just completed, is going to be at the bottom, in line with the bottom of the front, which is piece A. I just find it's easier when we're single crocheting all the way around to single crochet uh, not into two chain stitches. So that's why I recommend putting your chain row at the top and the bottom, which is the last stitch you completed, uh, at the bottom. Now we're gonna place piece C, which is the top of the back, one with the double crochet stitches, on top of B and A, so that the double crochet stitches are near the middle here. And then line everything up so making sure each corner is together and we are going to pin everything in place. I've done the first two here on the side, but I'm going to just show you to make sure that you pin all three of these pieces together. This is the most important and somewhat tricky part is you're going to want to make sure that these are all in line with each other and that the top of the back creates a straight line. So with my pin, it's gonna make sure that they're all lined up and do the exact same for the other side. So now you should have pins all the way around. As I always say, if you like it, then you should have put a pin in it. That's one of the things I wish I knew when I first started to crochet. You could read all the things I wish I knew uh, which is on my website, but one of them was I really wish I'd put pins in more things starting out because you end up doing the same task over and over again without them. So you've now pinned your pillow all together and we are going to flip it over. So making sure that it all stays in place so that the paw print is now facing us. And we're gonna start by attaching our yarn to 
the left bottom corner right here. And then we're gonna cro single crochet these two pieces together all the way across. And let me show you how we're gonna do this. So into the corner, we're gonna attach our yarn. Okay, pulled it through, slip it stitch so that it stays put. And then we are going to flip it around so that we can actually cro single crochet along the bottom. Okay, so here is the first. This is actually the chain row we did, but we're going to single crochet into that first chain and then find the corresponding stitch from, let me pull this closer, from the back, from the bottom of the back. And then we're going, so I'll show you what I've done. Into the first chain, I can take this pin out now, into that first chain stitch, insert our hook, find the corresponding stitch, which just means which stitches <clears throat> is lined up with this one. Insert a hook into that stitch and single crochet. Let's do it for the next one. Insert a hook into the next chain, find the stitch that's lined up with it and single crochet. Because they both have the same amount of stitches, you should be able to evenly single crochet these two pieces together all the way across. Insert a hook into the chain and then into the stitch and single crochet. So do this all the way across and hit play again when you get close to the corner. I have two stitches left before the corner, so I'll just do these quickly. Single crochet them together, single crochet together. And now I'm at the corner stitch, this one right here. And into the corner stitch, this, this little gap here in the corner, and into this corner gap as well, I'm going to single crochet three times into the same stitch. One, two, three. With our three corner stitches now completed, we're going to single crochet, I, I say up the row, even though you're working down, this is this is the bottom of the pillow, so it will be working up to the top, but it looks like we're going down. We're going to single crochet into each of these little gaps here. You see how it has a little gap? And there's another little gap on the other side that just created as we did the rows. And we're going to single crochet into those little gaps to crochet the two pieces together. So I've inserted my hook into both little gaps and then I single crochet. Here's another little gap. Insert my hook into this gap and into the following gap that's matched up with it. Pull my yarn through and single crochet. And I'm gonna do this until I get near to the part where there's going to be three overlapping pieces. So I'm now at the part where there are three overlapping pieces. We have the front, we have the bottom and the top, and we are going to single crochet into all of them. So start by putting your hook into the first piece, which is the front, and then find the corresponding little gap there from the bottom, and then from the top piece, there should also be a bottom. And actually, you're gonna go as close to the corner as possible in the top piece, and then bring our yarn through and single crochet. Let's do it again. Insert a hook into the gap, find the next gap, and then the next gap, and pull our yarn through. And do it again. You're gonna do this. All the way up until the three pieces don't overlap anymore at which point you'll continue to single crochet just the two pieces together. So go ahead and single crochet these three pieces together. 
and then single crochet these two pieces together until you get to the corner. All right, I have single crocheted all the way up, which I think creates a really nice way to fasten the pillow. And when I get to the corner stitch here, we're gonna single crochet three times into the both corner stitches. And now we're going to single crochet the tops together. Even though it's at the bottom, we are working on the tops. So we're just gonna single crochet into each stitch all the way across. And then when we get to this corner, we're just gonna do the exact same thing, single crochet into the corner stitches three times. And then we're gonna work our way down the other side, doing exactly what we just did. So after our three corner stitches, single crochet all the way down, and attach the three pieces together all the way down until they don't overlap anymore. And then single crochet the remaining sides together. And when you get back to the very first stitch where you started, single crochet two times into that starting stitch. And that's it. And then you can fasten off and enjoy your beautiful pillow cover. Thank you so much for watching. I really, uh, I hope you enjoyed this pattern as much as I've enjoyed making and sharing it with you. Again, if, if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me a thumbs up, I'd be so grateful. And I'd absolutely love to see what you created as well. If you have any questions, please contact me anytime. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.